Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now before I get started today, I just want to give a quick shout out to my friend Darren or Dazza Razzmatazz here on YouTube. He's just made a very cool video comparing the G3258 with a high-end i7 CPU and a GTX 1050 Ti. It's very well presented and interesting, so I'll leave you guys a link right here on the screen if you want to check him out and maybe subscribe to his channel. So, moving on to today's video and something very interesting caught my eye when looking for my next purchase. Something I never even knew existed and that is the first and only wireless graphics card. Now you may be, well, not very surprised to hear this, but we couldn't find one of these anywhere for testing purposes. But from what I've seen in reviews and spec sheets, it's pretty much identical performance wise to a standard 1GB GTX 460 because aside from its obvious aesthetic differences, it was only what some call the gimmick of the card that made it any different, as well as the hefty price increase. Now today I thought it would be interesting to talk about the concept of a card like this and why it didn't catch on, especially at a time where new and exciting innovations are being made every day. Now we actually tested out a standard GTX 460 a few months ago and found that it still offered fair performance in today's games thanks to its DirectX 11 support as well as affordable used price. The WHDI 460 as it was known or wireless high definition interface was released in late 2010 or early 2011 and was available under the Galaxy name in North America or KFA2 for European markets. It featured a 675MHz core clock with 336 CUDA cores and 1GB of GDDR5 memory. The card also required a 450W PSU with two 6-pin connectors. Being a WHDI card, its 5 wireless antennas would connect to a receiver box that would be placed next to a TV or monitor elsewhere in your house and hooked up to said display via an HDMI cable. It seems as though this thing cost around four to five hundred dollars at launch or about 350 pounds, more than double that of a standard 460 at the time. Now you installed this card in your PC just like any other GPU and you could connect it the normal way to a monitor at your desk but having your PC in one room with the display in another does sound quite cool and the card received pretty good reviews from both professionals and consumers alike. Of course, you'd also have to have a wireless keyboard and mouse as well so that you could sit on your sofa whilst your PC is tucked away in another room. So why didn't this technology catch on? And why don't we see GPUs like this anymore? Watching films without the distraction of a slight hum of a PC tower, gaming on your family's big screen without having to lug your whole system into the living room, and best of all, this was done without a sacrifice in speed or quality. 1080p 60fps was no problem here, and a 100 foot range ensured constant connectivity. You could also plug a wireless dongle in the back of the receiver box for your keyboard and mouse to connect to for a better signal. But here's the problem. Most people would just prefer to use a desktop PC at their desk and I can only imagine the wireless issues that you're bound to run into despite the positive reviews floating about. Also, these days if you want to watch a movie on your big screen then there are plenty of methods for doing so. Chromecast and the existence of smart TVs with web functionality and apps like Netflix built in come to mind. Not to mention things like Steam Link if you want to stream games. I guess wireless graphics cards are sort of unnecessary and not really in demand, but still, I personally would love a few and more modern wireless GPU solutions just for the sake of the gimmick alone. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I know again it's been a little bit different, but I just found this whole concept of wireless GPUs interesting, and I never actually knew that this one existed. It was of course the first and last of its type and we never really saw or heard anything from wireless graphics cards from that point onward. So let me know what you think about them, if you'd like to see something like this now, or why you just think it's totally a ridiculous idea or concept. So as always guys, leave a like if you enjoyed this, dislike it if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video.